So the first thing you're going to establish when we're setting up the seat position is looking at the seat height. Now the seat height is going to be determined largely by the desk position because we want to make sure that the user's arms are level with the top of the desk. So we're going to adjust the seat height so that when I sat back in the chair nice and relaxed, the arms and shoulders are relaxed and the elbows are roughly 90 degrees, their arms are level with the top of the surface. And that's the main thing we're going to look for. But for now, let me just ignore the desk just for a second because I want to talk about how our seat height can affect our posture. Now, if I'm sitting here like this, you can see my thighs are pretty much level with the ground. Maybe my knees are slightly higher than my hips even, but fairly, fairly parallel with the ground. What that does is, if you imagine my pelvis is a circle, it means now I have a propensity to kind of rock down into this position, right? And that's kind of our natural where my pelvis wants to go. I have to work really quite hard to keep it in that position. And the lower I go, if I come even lower down, so my knees are above my hips now, and that really makes you want to kind of slum down into this kind of posture. So to encourage a more straight posture, what I want to do is have the seat height so that my knees are actually slightly below my hips. And by having my knees below my hips, that thigh bone almost acts as a lever and it kind of rotates the pelvis forward into this position. I'm not going to go necessarily this far, but just having a slight downward slope helps me to keep my pelvis in that forward rotated position. And that combined with sitting fully back in the chair to block my pelvis from rocking backwards helps me to maintain that sitting position. Now here, um, you can see at this position, I'm way too high for the desk and I'm particularly tall. So I would have to have that lower down which means then my arms, um, my arms are in the right position for the desk. My knees are not, um, not maybe optimal. So you are going to have to set the seat height for the desk, assuming you have a fixed height desk. If you have a height adjustable desk, of course, you can then set the seat height so it's perfect for the user and that, having that slight downward thigh angle. And then you just adjust the seat, um, sorry, just adjust the desk level with the arms. This is actually height adjustable desk. So in this case, I would be able to have a taller seating position. And then I could just raise the desk up into this nice posture, nice position here. And that's where I would work. So just to recap, adjust the seat height so that the arms are level with the top of the desk. Ideally, that leads to a slight forward tilt by having a the knees slightly are below the hips, which gives you a slight downward slope of the thigh, which gives you a slight forward tilt of the pelvis, and that then helps to maintain that nice lumbar arch that we're looking for. Okay. Sometimes, of course, you're going to raise the seat, and what that's going to mean is that the person's feet are not supported if they're particularly short. So if you have to raise them up so their arms are level at the top of the desk and their feet are not now firmly on the floor, then they need a foot rest. Okay. Once you've got that seat height correct, so once you've raised the seat, seen if the knees are slightly below the hips, checked if they need a foot rest or not. So now their feet are supported, we're in a good posture in terms of their hip and pelvis. The next thing you want to adjust is the backrest position. So with a lot of backrests, particularly these kind of upholstered foam backrests, we have a contour to the shape of the chair, right? which gives you a kind of lumbar cushion, if you like, in there. And most chairs have the ability then to move this up and down so you can position that backrest where you want. Now, this chair has a lever that you press to release that. Some chairs you just pull up and down with all those ratchet height adjustment mechanisms. Um, but whatever works, you're just going to make sure you adjust up and down. And what I sometimes do is get the user to sit on the edge of the seat and then sit up tall to create an arch in the back and kind of feel where their back naturally dips in. So where is that inward lumbar curve? They can then sit back in the chair and have that lumbar curve, like lumbar cushion, should I say, sit where their hand is. So you can see where that line's probably a little bit low for me. We'll see if I can raise that up a little bit further. Now, bear in mind, I'm six foot six and I have a long torso relative to myself. So a lot of times these chairs just don't go along for people that are at that end of the spectrum, but that's probably where I'm gonna get, get it. And that's actually not too bad. It kind of fits slightly lower than ideal, but it kind of fits and I can potentially raise this neck rest a little bit if I wanted to, and then sit in that position. So it's pretty comfortable, if not optimal, but the idea is just to try to get that lumbar cushion as close to that inward curve as, as you can. Some chairs also have an inflatable, this chair does as well, um, have an inflatable uh, air cushion that sits within the backrest there, and you have a usually some like little pump or something you can squeeze and 
and that will give you a bit more depth adjustability in terms of that lumbar cushion as well if you want it. So you want to make sure that you have, uh, once that's in the right place, then we're looking at the level of tilt. Okay, that's the, the, the next thing to adjust. So we adjust the seat height. We're happy with that. The feet are supported on the floor. You're in a nice forward downward thigh position. You've got the lumbar cushion in the right place. Now I want to see how far forward tilted or back you are. Now, the key to that is looking at, is the head in line with the spine? And you can look at the ear and see if that's in line with the shoulder. And you want that head and shoulder to be in balance. Now, if you look at me here, it's not too bad. You can, I'm sure you'd agree. You can see that the ear is pretty much in line with my shoulder. But the problem with this is that I'm slightly too straight. So I feel like I want to just slump down into this position. Gravity is pulling me here. And over time, I'm, I'm going to end up probably leaning forward and ending up in this kind of position, leaning on the desk, which is fairly common. What I can do to offset that slightly is just to have a little bit more recline. So I can just release that, come back a little bit. Now when I relax, I actually feel like I'm sinking back and supported by the chair. There's no effort to sit in this position. And yet I'm still able to maintain a relatively neutral posture with my head in line with the spine. Now, if I go too far back, then inevitably I will end up coming away from the desk and end up in this position. So I start to lose contact with the backrest because the seat's almost too far reclined. Because essentially what I'm doing now is bringing my torso back to that position. But because the screen is there, I'm never going to, I'm going to have to keep my head here, which then creates that forward ang ang head angle. So you want to make sure you're not going too far back. You want to bring the chair up so that you are able to have that nice contact with the shoulder blades, keep the head in line with the spine, and then, but still be able to relax into that sitting position, probably a bit too straight. Right there is ideal for me. If you've got nice adjustable armrests that sit back by the elbows, then that's kind of perfect. Often you see armrests that sit too far forwards and they kind of support the forearms, but not necessarily the elbows, and they can be a little bit obstructive, but that's another topic. Okay. So just to recap, really simple with the chair setup. Set the seat height so the arms are level with the top of a fixed desk. If you have a height adjustable desk, then you adjust the seat height for the, the user's legs. So just make sure the knees are slightly below the hips and then adjust the desk height so it's level with the arms. If it is a fixed desk and you've raised the seat or lowered the seat so that the arms are level with the, with the top of it, then just check the legs. Ideally, knees are slightly lower than the hips. If somebody's particularly tall, and so they've had to lower the seat so their arms are level with the desk. Uh, and it brings those knees up into that position, as I mentioned before. We've kind of helped bring them, into, bring them into this type of posture. The only solution to that is to raise the desk. And you can do that. Um, some desks have desk raise kits. Um, some desks, you can have some adjustability to them. Some desks, you may need to put um, desk riser blocks underneath. So kind of feet that kind of go underneath and you can raise it up by about five centimeters doing that. So. What I would typically do if I felt like the desk really needed to be raised, would I get the user in a, in a position that they feel most comfortable, and I would just take a tape measure and just measure from the arm down to the floor, and I know that's roughly the, the desk height that we want. You can measure the desk if the desk is 72, and that height there is 78. Then we know ideally want a five to six centimeter desk raise um, to accommodate that slightly higher position. Okay, So that's what you would do if you have someone that's particularly tall uh, and actually you want to maintain that um, toward a sitting position. If you have someone that's shorter, of course, and you've raised them up so that their arms are level at the top of the desk, then they will probably need a foot rest. You need to make sure that you have at least some weight going through your feet. Your feet shouldn't just be touching the floor. You should feel like your feet feel, feel, feel fairly stable on the floor. Now, the next thing you want to adjust, of course, was the uh, back height, so raising the back up and down so that lumbar cushion is in the right place, and then the tilt so that the head is in line with the spine and able to sit back in a nice relaxed sitting position. And that's essentially how you look at the setup of a chair um, that has what we call independent adjustment of the backrest, which means I can adjust the tilt of the back angle to the backrest. It goes forward and backwards independently of the seat. So the seat's not moving the back angles. And some chairs you can do that. Some chairs have what we've got, what we've got. I've got what we call a synchronized tilt, where the back and the seat tilt together. Um, and I'm going to come back to that in a second. We'll kind of have a look at the synchronized tilt. Before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about screen positioning, keyboard, and mouse positioning. So once you've got the chair set up and they're happy in a comfortable sitting posture, the next thing to do is to look at where the keyboard and other input devices sit on the desk. So you want to make sure that when they're sat and relaxed, you can almost move the keyboard out of the way if you wanted to. Get them to relax their hands on the desk 
in a nice comfortable distance. And where the fingers naturally sit, that's where the home row, which is the middle row of the keys, should be. So they're able to type without kind of leaning forward and reaching. Um, some people like to get a little bit closer, in which case they would push the keyboard back a little bit. And it's okay to rest the arms on the desk, as long as you're not leaning on the desk and leaning back on the chair, it's okay to rest the arms and work in that position there. And obviously with the mouse, the key is really just keeping it nice and close and within that easy reach. Regarding the screen, the top of the viewable screen should be level with your line of sight so that you have a slight downward gaze. Um, and the screen should be roughly arm's length. Now you can see this one's a bit further away. So I could bring that in a little bit. What I would do is start at arm's length. I think, you know what, that feels a bit close for, the, for what I'm working on. Then I might bring it a bit further, take it a bit further away. If I have your arm's length, and I feel that, you know what, this feels now um, that it's a little bit too far away and I'm leaning towards it, then just bring it a little bit closer. So it depends on the size of the screen, on the image quality, on, um, on what you're working on, particularly whether it's small fonts or whether it's um, coding software, if it's large spreadsheets, whatever you're working with. Uh, may, is going to um, determine um, where the screen sits. Things like the environment and lighting and, and, and things like that will also have an impact on your screen distance. So start off about arm's length and then move it closer or further away depending on um, and what they're working with. All right. Um, but essentially in terms of the height, as I say, top of the screen at eye level, that gives us a slight downward gaze. And the idea is that instead of looking straight ahead, we actually look down slightly and that minimizes stress on the eyes. Okay. Now, now, as I mentioned, some chairs have a, a synchronized tilt mechanism. And what that means, you can see with this chair, this is called the Aeron chair, and, and it has um, a forward and backward tilt, but the back and the seat tilt together. So you can see with this chair, as the back tilts, the seat tilts at the same time. So you have um, a synchronous tilt mechanism. Now, with these chairs, what you can't do is independently adjust the angle of the backrest relative to the seat. So what you find with these chairs is that I can even have them locked in one position, which is here, or I can release it so that the chair tilts. And then what I would do is adjust the level of tension to match my body weight. So the idea is to release the tilt mechanisms here. Now, when I sit it at the chair tilts, if it's too far back and I feel like this is a, my head is now coming forward, I would adjust, most of these chairs have a tension adjustment knob. I will turn that up. Now, when I relax in it, there's enough tension in the spring to hold me in that optimum level of recline that I'm looking for. Okay, so now my head is back in line with the spine. Same principle in terms of seat height, footrest if you need it. Um, everything we looked at with the independent tilt mechanism, um, except the only thing that's different with the synchronized tilt mechanism you have to kind of adjust the level of recline by adjusting the level of tension. If you want to have it fixed and locked with this type of chair, then you really only can have it fixed and locked in one position. Um, sometimes you have an ability to bring it further back or further forward, but at the most you might get two, three, four predefined locked positions um, and, and rather than an infinite ability to be able to position the tilt as you would with an independent back tilt angle chair. Okay, um, so that's a synchronized tilt chair. Okay, um, hope that's useful. Thank you.